So we're here today to talk about giving thanks to the earth and uh, why we do it and how we do it. And it's also to feel our connection to the earth. That's also why we're here. And giving thanks is a, a wonderful way to feel our connection to the earth. Sometimes when uh, we feel that we give thanks, maybe we think it's about the other uh, being, but it's also about us. It's all one uh, beautiful round sharing. As we give our thanks, we also receive the gift so much deeper. And so it's a beautiful round circle. That's right. And, and uh, it's also what never ceases to amaze me is, is the beauty of the connection between giving and receiving. And, and the one doesn't stop at some place and the other one begin. It's, it's constant motion. And so often I find we get told about what we should be grateful for. But for us in seeing gratitude as a spiritual practice, it's necessary to really come into the truth of what we really do feel grateful for. And maybe that's difficult sometimes but there are some really simple ways to begin that are specifically related to the earth that brings us into a remembrance, a deep remembrance of that we actually do depend on the earth for our physical lives every day. And a great place to start is just to feel truly thankful for water, air, food, and the life-giving sun. Those are the essences of life and whatever else is going on in your life, you can give thanks for that. As you say, though, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to remember these things. And so then it's necessary to stop, to just stop. And, and yes, there are a lot of things to be sad about, to be upset about. But don't let that obliterate, don't let that wipe out the true fact of life. Life is, and you are alive. And what a gift that is. And so when we remember the things that we are actually grateful for, especially in relationship to the earth, uh, which is what gives us life here, in, in this life, on this planet, uh, I, what I find is it begins to fill me up so that it actually helps me to receive the gift even more. It becomes a sort of fullness. And the more I feel my real true gratitude, the more the gift sort of begins to fill out in me and the richer it becomes and the more powerful it becomes. And this is why we talk about gratitude as an empowerment practice, both for the person who's giving their thanks and also for the personal being who is receiving it. We do not lose anything if it's a true thank you. We only receive. Mm. And it's uh, just occurred to me uh, in this very moment uh, that uh, the expression in English is to give thanks. Mm. Right? Well, we receive something and then we give. And it's this whole perpetual motion of, of giving and receiving. It, it never stops. And uh, even when you're surrounded by devastation, breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm alive. These are the words of Thich Nhat Hanh, mm. a great teacher who really valued gratitude. And uh, many years ago, your spirit teachers gave you this beautiful phrase about giving and receiving. Mm. Give without losing, receive without taking. And so when we feel that we are actually giving thanks and love to the earth, without losing, then it, it grows in the world. 
And we're in a situation right now where um, in many cultures, many societies, um, our human life is based on extracting from the earth, on taking. And very rarely is there a sense of reciprocity, a sense not only of seeing giving back as a kind of payback, or oh, if you give me this, I'll give you that, but as a deep gratitude for what is freely given from the earth and very often taken. So the fact that there is actually a, a huge um, energetic, spiritual imbalance in the world uh, right now, that so much is being taken without being given permission for or without giving anything back in return. So when we do Thanksgiving ceremonies, not only is it beautiful and empowering for us, but it's also a real way to try and bring back power and balance to the earth where so much has been taken so this is what we can give back and just giving gratitude can really be a very refilling and empowering energizing act not just for us but also for the earth and uh, <clears throat> there's an example of this uh, a few kilometers away from here uh, there used to be uh, an open gravel mine where they were just extracting gravel and uh, there had been a forest there before <clears throat> and it was very upsetting for me when they started doing this but eventually after um, I guess about 10 years of extraction they had gotten out as, as much as they could get or as much as they felt they should take. I don't know. I wasn't there at the board meeting. And they started to uh, redesign the landscape. So it wasn't this wounded landscape, but again, this wonderful rolling hillside. And now they've planted a forest there. And, and this, this is the way things can be done. This is the way things can be done. And this is also a very wonderful example for how we can live our own lives. So if you want to do something for the earth, a wonderful, simple way that anyone can do is go out and give heartfelt gratitude. It's only when it's really real that it has the healing power. And so you can go to a place in nature that has been, uh, looks like it has been destroyed, uh, like it has been extracted. You can go right there and sing your thanks, speak your thanks, give your thanks. You can also do it anywhere in nature. Waterways are fantastic because all the water molecules in the world are connected eventually in the water cycle. So wherever you go and give thanks to water and speaking words or singing songs or making music or speaking from your heart, that will be taken throughout the world through the water cycle. It's pretty amazing to think of. Also the air, you can just speak your thanks into the air or plant it in the ground and let it go down with the roots of a tree or the roots of a plant. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's uh, innumerable ways. But the thing to really learn, which uh, has taken me many years to learn, because uh, when I was a teenager and, and younger, I often did not feel gratitude about anything. And that was because I was mainly uh, concentrated on myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the early steps is to feel your connection to things. And so, okay, you get to a forest that's been cleared and you can feel the sadness and at the same time feel the gratitude to the forest that has been there for all that has brought and hopefully it will be used for a good purpose and then you can sing you can sing your gratitude to that forest and those uh, microbes in the soil which will generate the next forest. They will hear you. They will hear you. You can sing to your seeds as you plant a garden. 
and you can also uh, give thanks to places that have given you a lot, maybe a lot of beauty, a lot of comfort, or a lot of power and energy. It's always a wonderful thing when we feel we're receiving something to say, how can I thank you? And again, not because we're in some kind of beholden state where we have to pay back, but just because our hearts are so open that we, we want to share. We want to recognize the value of the gift that we're given. Mm -hmm. So you can learn to be a, a champion, mm -hmm. a champion of the world, of the earth, a champion of gratitude. It's, it's, uh, a lot of people talk about being a warrior. I like to take it a step way beyond that. Having been a warrior, having been in a war, um, this is this is nothing that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in being a warrior, but I would love to be a champion of peace, a champion of fruitfulness, a champion of regeneration, a champion of re-empowerment. And, and this is what my life is oriented towards now. A champion of life. A champion of life. And so there are some really simple ways you can do it, and you can share it with anyone and uh, all ages. It's wonderful to do it with children. A really simple way to start, of course, is to remember where your food comes from and your water, even if it comes from a tap. It comes from somewhere in the earth. It's such a simple way. And again, saying it in a way that so you remember the connection. Sometimes we don't like to feel vulnerable or dependent. Many of us are brought up to be independent. But all of us are not only interdependent, but actually very deeply dependent on the earth every day. Without water, air, and food, we would not survive very long at all. And so we have to accept that we are in great, great desperate need of all the Earth's gifts and what she gives so freely to us. And as we really accept that, we can come into a much deeper and more loving felt relationship. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I just came to think, uh, because of what you were saying mm -hmm. right now, uh, it's very normal uh, for us when we're eating food, if the food just really tastes good. You know, we're really hungry, and somebody gives us a dish of our favorite food. We say, "Oh wow, this tastes so good." That is a form of being grateful. Yeah, and to taste uh, fresh water from the pump, or or even from a beautiful mountain stream, mm -hmm. it just has something extra special about it. So don't be ashamed to give thanks just by saying, this is so good, and this if, is so good. And if you can speak to the earth, mm. speak to the food, mm. to the water, to the air, mm. to the sun, mm. speak directly so you feel this direct connection and relationship. Yeah, we're so lucky because uh, our, our water here comes directly out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> we have a special system, and every time I drink the water, I give. I think about our friend who came and uh, established this uh, wonderful system we have in our house, and I also think about how delicious the water is, and it makes me happy, right? And if I'm happy, then you know that that spreads out to the world around me. I hope. <laughs> And maybe you read a book, and then you can give thanks to the trees that gave their life for that book. If you're wearing cotton or hemp clothes, you can give thanks for the plants that gave their life for that. If you're holding a bottle of plastic, then you can give thanks to the ancient creatures that created the oil that created the plastic. Mm. There is always a way to say thank you. And what we have found is that it's to really truly value the act of thanksgiving. 
so that we don't think it's meaningless or valueless or it's too small a thing. It's not too small a thing. It's a great place to begin and to grow a kind of life of really meaningful gratitude. Mm -hmm. As you said, to be a champion of life mm -hmm. through giving thanks and feeling our relationship. Uh, <clears throat> a few years ago, I had a, a very major life experience. Uh, well, I had a few. One was that I had a, a very serious uh, eight-hour operation. But the major experience was when I woke up from the operation and the nurse asked me, how do you feel? And I heard these words come out of my mouth. I said, I feel great. I'm alive. And, and that, that was such a special moment to hear those words coming out of my, light, my mouth because honestly, I had never felt more alive in my life than at that moment. And so that is a really special moment for me. And it has stayed with me in the years since that operation and influenced the way I see everything. So if you would like to give thanks for life, just begin in some way today. Uh, a wonderful way is to maybe share food with other people and, and make it a thanksgiving feast, you know, a, gra a feast of gratitude, where you can all just say things from the heart about uh, how it feels to receive these gifts. You can also go out to special places that you love or that you feel supported by or helped by. And of course you can bring a physical gift if you wish. It's a wonderful thing to give a bit of your hair or a bit of your spit. Sometimes people like to bring a little water or in other parts of the world maybe a little uh, liquid of some other kind. Maybe you've made a beautiful gift or you're bringing something very special. Uh, but try to make sure it's, it's something that, that would fit into the place. Um, another thing you can do, of course, is the non-physical gifts. Sometimes we get very um, focused on what we humans can see. But you can say a prayer from your heart. You can speak words of gratitude. You can sing. Or you can make a promise. You can make a, a commitment or a promise. It's a wonderful thing. And one of my favorite things, our favorite things, that we learned from Thich Nhat Hanh mm. is to write a love letter to the earth, mm. directly from your heart to the earth, saying, Dear Earth, thank you so much for da 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 da. I am so grateful to you for my life. And then you just write whatever you want to do. And you go out and read that love letter out loud somewhere in nature or in a city or yes. at home. Yeah. Because the earth is everywhere. Yeah, um, we're we're we've been practicing shamanism for a long time now. Uh, the human beings around the earth are very deeply into the uh, animistic practice, and that is also a part of shamanism, mm -hmm. definitely. And so we also give thanks to the spirits of food and to the spirit of the trees, the spirits of the land, the lakes, the oceans, the mountains, everything. And, and by feeling their aliveness deepens the whole Thanksgiving process. And this is a, a, a wonderful, wonderful gift to be able to see the whole world and everything in it as being truly alive. Mm -hmm. And this will also help you deepen your practice of gratitude because everything is alive and we're all connected. So after you have said your heartfelt thanks, Take a moment just to stand wherever you are or sit and feel the response from the world around you. Feel the response. And maybe you feel it very strongly. 
maybe you even hear or sense something, or maybe it's just a good feeling. Or if you don't feel anything at all, that's okay too. But just allow time for the world to respond. And maybe it will say something to you in three days or five days or ten years. But know that your simple act of gratitude is one of the greatest gifts we can give every day.